Welcome to the 26th lecture in mechanics of materials. The last lecture we saw how to compute the moment of inertia about an arbitrary oriented axis. In particular, we saw that if y and z axis lies in the plane of the cross section, then i y y given by integral z square d a x, i z z given by integral y square d a x, i y z given by integral y z d a x. We saw how to compute these moment of inertia and then we said that since the sign of the cross moment of inertia i y z flips sign when the coordinate system rotates by 90 degrees there will exist a orientation of it will go to 0 ok. And we define such a oriented axis wherein the cross moment of inertia is 0 as the principal axis for the cross section. Similar to the principal plane, principal directions that we have for the stresses and strains ok. So, we saw that and then we, we said in the last lecture that we were interested in looking at a beam subjected to loads in two directions. In particular, we will now analyze what happens when a beam is subjected to a loading along its principal direction. This is a rectangular cross section and the y and z parallel to the sides is a principal axis for this cross section. So, we are interested in studying what happens when I apply a load like this it bends in this manner and similarly if I apply a load perpendicular to this in this direction you can see that it is bending like this. So, we are interested in analyzing what will be the displacement field and what will be the stresses that will develop in this cross section due to loads applied both vertically and perpendicular to the plane of the beam ok cross section ok. So, we are interested in studying this displacement coupled with this displacement in this lecture ok. So, now, what we are interested is in the scenario wherein the load is applied along the principal direction both the principal axis u and v axis ok. Then we are interested in writing what will be the displacement field. The displacement field u would be there will be a delta u as a function of a x e u plus delta v function of a x e v plus along the x direction there will be a displacement negative u minus u naught d delta u by d x plus v minus v naught d delta v by d x into e x plus ok. Let us see how does the displacement field arise when you have bending due to load separate both along the both the principal axis ok. It comes from plane section remain plane hypothesis the same hypothesis that we use when the beam was bending along one direction ok. So, now when the beam was bending along one direction you add u given by minus y minus y naught d delta y by d x e x plus delta y as a function of x e y right. Because what we said was if this is a neutral axis of the beam it will deform into a shape something like this due to, due to bending ok. Then a section which is perpendicular to the axis of the beam initially will remain perpendicular and, and will remain plane ok. So, basically what happens is the tangent line to this nodal axis and this makes 90 degrees. So, this vertical line which now when extended down extended down sees a displacement which is given by this distance and this distance was this distance was I will uh, uh, magnify this figure. So, basically you add the neutral axis initially like that and then it deformed into something like this and the straight line by being a straight line like that, but it deformed into some line like this such that it is perpendicular to the neutral axis at that point. So, it would have been something like that. Okay, and we are interested now in finding what 
this displacement is we are interested in finding this displacement this displacement would be uh, if I assume small rotations this distance times this angle theta and that angle theta will be related to the slope of the tangent to the neutral axis at that location theta this is nothing but d delta y by dx if this is delta y that deflection is delta y that will be d delta y by dx and then this will be y minus y naught d delta y by dx right. Similarly now what is happening is it is bending like this but instead of delta y there is a delta v coming in there. So you have u minus u naught d delta u by dx ex plus delta u is a function of x e u because the cross section axis in the plane of the cross section is u and v okay and then what happens is this straight line again now instead of bending in the plane of the uh, board here bends like this outside the plane of the uh, white board here okay since it bends like that that will result in a displacement field of delta v of x e v delta v of x e v okay and this delta v similar to the arguments that we used here similar to the arguments used here will produce a displacement in the x direction which is which will be now instead of y it will be z in this case in our case will be v minus v naught into delta v by dx okay. So that will produce a displacement minus v minus v naught d delta v by dx this entire thing is the x component of the displacement okay that is how we got that the remaining steps are the same now uh, I want to find this displacement gradient h which is gradient of u which would be minus u minus u naught d square delta u by dx square plus v minus v naught d square delta v by dx square dx square okay and then it is going to be minus d delta u by dx minus d delta v by dx here it is going to be d delta u by dx d delta v by dx 0 0 0 0 okay that is the gradient of displacement field okay. Now I am interested in finding the strain okay so basically now I am interested in finding the strain epsilon which is 1 half h plus h transpose that will give me this will imply that epsilon xx strain alone is non-zero which will be u minus u naught with a negative sign d square delta u by dx square plus v minus v naught d square delta v by dx square okay. Now I have to substitute this in the expression for the actual force okay net actual stress sigma xx now from here I will get sigma xx as e times epsilon xx using a one dimensional constant relation then I am interested in finding sigma xx d ax ax that is a net axial force in the cross section this we said is 0 for beam bending problems okay so this has to be 0 this will imply that integral e times u minus integral e minus u minus u naught d square delta u 
by d x square plus v minus v naught d square delta v by d x square d a x has to be equal to 0. Okay. Now, what happens? I assume the beam to be beam is homogeneous. This will imply I can pull out the E d square delta u by d x square integral u minus u naught d a x a x plus negative sign I can leave it out because it is equal to 0 d a v d x square integral v minus v naught d a x a x has to be 0. Okay. Now, you have one equation, but you have two unknowns u naught and v naught which you have to find from the one equation. What the argument we give here is each of these individual terms this has to be 0 for that to hold and this has to be 0 for the above equation to hold because delta u and delta v are independent. I can have delta u displacement, but no delta v displacement, I can have delta v displacement and no delta u displacement and still this equation has to hold. Hence, you require the individual components of this additive equation to be 0 from where you get u naught as integral u d a x by integral d a x and you get v naught as integral v d a x divided by integral d a x where d a x here means d u d v. I am integrating in the principal axis plane okay, d u d v. Okay. So, basically now this is the expression for u naught and v naught. Okay. Next the expression is uh, next I have to find d square delta u by d x square next I have to find d square delta u by d x square and d square delta v by d x square that comes from the moment equations. Okay. The moment equations are I have m v moment given by integral u minus u naught sigma x x d a x this is similar to m similar to m z moment being given by integral y minus y naught sigma x x d a x a x where I have replaced z with v and y with u. Okay. So, basically I change from x y z axis to x u v axis ends this change. Okay. Now, then what will I get? I got sigma x x as this equation in here epsilon x s substituted in here with x more or less gave me the sigma x x equation. So, I will substitute that equation back in here for sigma x x to get m v as integral u minus u naught square d square delta u by d x square times e again I assume the homogeneous cross section of the beam plus v minus v naught into u minus u naught d square delta v by d x square d a x a x. Okay. Now, we find that u naught and v naught are nothing but the center of the cross section from the expression that we got here we understand that u naught and v naught are the center of the cross section. So, if the origin of the coordinate system is oriented at the center of the cross section u naught and v naught would be 0 and d n s you this equation will simplify it to m v would be e times i v v d square delta u by d x square plus e times i u v d square delta v by d x square, but this by our definition of u v axis is 0. Okay. 
now here I use the fact that u naught v naught is equal to 0 because origin is at u naught v naught okay and I use the fact that and the beam is homogeneous. Okay, so that is the first equation. The second equation similarly will be the moment for m u direction, which will be integral v minus v naught sigma x x d a x. Okay, so this is similar to m y moment, which is integral z minus z naught into sigma x x d a x a x ok. Now this moment is if I substitute for sigma x x I will get this as m mu moment as integral e again I assume the beam is homogeneous a x u minus u naught into v minus v naught d square delta u by dx square plus v minus v naught whole square d square delta v by dx square dax. This will simplify to e times i u v is again 0. So, this will be i u u d square delta v by dx square for sigma x x there will be a negative sign in there because epsilon has a negative sign in there ok. So, this will be this ok. So, now from for same reasons as this you got this equation same reasons here ok. Now, you have E d square delta v by d x square equal to m v by i v v and solving this equations E d square delta v by d x square equal to m u by i u u with a negative sign in ok. Substituting how I know how m v and m u varies as a function of x. So, I use this equation to find delta u and delta v ok. Then I substitute this entire thing into the stress expression to get my sigma x x as m v by i v v to u minus u naught plus m u divided by i u u into v minus v naught ok will be the stress in the member ok.